Uh, Stephen, may I be the first to congratulate you on a, a truly marvellous career. Um, why have you decided to call it a day? Well, there's a few reasons, really. Obviously, you get aware of this time coming towards the end and um, the body starts talking to you. You know, the pains and the aches get more regular. Um, the way you feel out there on the pitch changes. Um, over the last couple of years, I've felt myself slowing down a little bit, if you like, and I basically can't deliver what I used to be able to deliver. Um, and that becomes a little bit frustrating as time goes on. And also, you know, I, I, I've listened to people over the years and um, important people in the game who I trust and have a lot of respect for have said to me, you know, always go with a tiny bit left. Uh, never overstay your welcome and play on too long where um, it becomes embarrassing. So I can feel that's not too far away, so now's the right time. Was there a moment? Not, not one moment. I think it was more a, a period. Um, I think my last three, four months at the Galaxy, I was getting too many injuries. Um, I didn't really feel as sharp as I used to. Um, the games were becoming more challenging, especially in altitude and heat, humidity. The, the travel was affecting me, so it was more a period of time rather than one particular moment. In saying that, I've had a few moments in the last six months where I've thought um, I didn't play well today or that guy got the better of me. Um, and I don't like saying that to myself, so now's the right time. Will you miss it? 100%. Um, I'm the type of person that loves playing football. I love the game. I love training on a daily basis. I love competing. And I've absolutely loved the journey. Through the highs and lows over the years, I've loved every minute of it. So I'm going to miss it immensely. Describe your emotions about having to retire. Because, I mean, it comes to us all yeah. uh, in football. Uh, describe how it feels to you. I think very mixed at the moment. I'm, I'm a tad sad because I'm not going to be out there on the pitch, I'm not going to be in the, the dressing room with the boys with all the banter and going out to compete anymore. I'm not going to play in front of them huge crowds and have them incredible moments, the highs that you know are beautiful as a footballer. Um, so a bit mixed, but at the same time I'm, I'm proud and uh, I'm happy. I've achieved many, many things that I never thought I'd get near. Um, I keep telling myself, you know, I'm a young boy from a council estate who had dreams of playing for my hometown club and I keep going back to there and um, I'm very grateful how it's gone. You mentioned there your highs, great moments. Uh, the best of those moments for you? Obviously the Champions League in Istanbul 2005. Um, you know, getting that fifth Champions League for Liverpool, the trophy that we keep forever. Um, and given the nature of the game as well, I mean, it was an course, extraordinary football it was match, a, it? it? was a dream just to be involved in, in the ride and the journey, but to actually get the cup at the end of it. Um, and the game, probably the best Champions League final ever to watch was uh, was a miracle, really. The and for you personally as well, you kind of dragged them back in it, didn't you? Almost single-handed. The nice, the nice thing for me was that I contributed big in the game. You know, being the captain, there was a lot of pressure that I had to deliver in that game. And uh, looking back on it now, really pleased how it went. Um, but at the same time, along the way as well, there's been some really brutal lows that have took a lot out of me as well. The worst, um, obviously, Chelsea, the Chelsea game. Um, that's one that'll haunt me for a long time. Um, the complete opposite to the feelings of, of the Champions League where you're on this incredible high and then when you go back to the Chelsea game and uh, that being a pivotal moment, um, it, it felt like a disaster happened in my life. That's how bad it was. Uh, one of the few players, of course, to play over 100 games for your country, the, the highs for England? Every time you put the shirt on, you know, representing it, you, you're asked many times by a lot of children and people out there what's it like to play for England and until you actually put that shirt on for the first time and then do it on a regular basis it's difficult to describe uh, representing your country and millions and millions of people that was another dream that I achieved and to do it over a hundred times was, was incredible for me um, but looking back over my England career it's it's mixed like like most people's are um, you know you have like your Germany 5-1 results that you feel really great about and then you have the shootout heartaches when you've missed a penalty, um, or, for example, under Steve McLaren when we didn't qualify, and you have them brutal lows as well. Um, but it, it's part and parcel of being a footballer and having that long career. It's always going to be full of highs and lows. If you look back on your own career, describe your strengths as a player. For me, uh, obviously, I'm not really one for being big-headed or 
that type of person. But for me, I, I, I think my game, I could do a little bit of everything. Um, I wouldn't say I was the best goal scorer midfielder out there. I wouldn't say I was the best defensive midfielder out there. But what I could do is I could do a little bit of everything. So I could head it, I could tackle, I could run, I could pass over different distances, I could nick a goal. Um, so I think that was my strength, having the body and the endurance to do a little bit of everything. If you look at yourself, you might find this easier to answer. A weakness? Have you got does the weakness in Steven Gerrard's game? I think uh, the weakness here in the early years, I think Rafa Benitez pointed that out uh, quite cleverly, was uh, probably discipline uh, in terms of uh, losing my position as a centre midfielder too easily, um, and also maybe emotions, controlling my emotions in terms of getting stupid yellow cards and a few stupid red cards. I've let my teammates down on, on a few occasions. Um, they're the things that I look back on and wish I could go back and, and correct them things to have a, a totally smooth career. But, you know, who's out there that has, that has that perfect career? I'm not sure there's many. You ended your career, obviously, at LA Galaxy, but predominantly you'll always be remembered as a Liverpool player. You played there practically your whole career. Yeah. Any regrets on that? Do you perhaps think sometimes oh, could have moved? You nearly did, of course, didn't you? Yeah, of course. I mean, I'm sitting here now with, with no, regrets in, no regrets in terms of how the whole career went. Um, but, you know, I get quite a bit of stick along the way about not winning the Premier League, mm. for example. Um, and I look back at the opportunities I had to go to the strongest teams in the league and I probably would be sitting here with four or five Premier League medals. I, you know, I could have went abroad to the big teams and, and chased that glory, but it's also satisfying at the same time to know I stayed loyal to the people that are mo most important to me and um, I didn't chase cash or I didn't chase the glory. Um, of course, uh, I'm sitting here with that one big regret that I didn't win the Premier League. But at the same time, I'm very satisfied with my own loyalty. What does Liverpool Football Club mean to you? The world. Um, you know, I started supporting the club at a very young age. Um, a lot of my family are Reds. Um, the way the club shaped me and treated me from a young age and turned me into a, a decent human being and a, and a good footballer, I've got, um, you know, a lot to thank them for. You feel you're going to go into coaching, perhaps, rather than perhaps television business for example? Well I, th I think I'd like to do a bit of both I think obviously now I'm, I'm really excited to get back to work with BT um, and cover the Champions League and the Premier League that's something that I've been looking forward to do to doing once I return but in the future I definitely have dreams and aspirations of having a go with the management or assisting the manager and, and being back involved in, in the dressing room um, but you know, I've got many, many years to do that. Um, the important thing for me now is to concentrate on BT, and in my spare time around that, to try and gain some experience. Mm. If you if you're looking ahead into to management, you've you've played with under many managers. Who who would be the most influential? Do you think taking it into your managerial career possibly? I think it'd be a bit disrespectful to pick one. Um, I'd like to take a little bit from them all, if the you good like, bits. good and bad. <laughs> Good and bad, because I think you can learn a lot from some managers where you've had a few disagreements or how they've handled certain situations where you feel like you'd do it different. Uh, Rafa Benitez was certainly the best coach tactically um, that I worked under. But I think you have to do it your way, the way you see the game and, and then basically use your experience as a player. Um, and, and, and the people that you learnt off to sort of put that around your own way of doing it. Best player you played with? Luis Suarez. Yeah. By a mile, yeah. Really that, that clear? Phenomenal. Yeah. Looking ahead now, you're talking about that, you're going to go into... Are you going to be back living here, presumably, moving yeah, straight I'm, back? Yeah, I'm going to be back with my family, based yeah. in Liverpool. Mm -hmm. um, it's frustrating playing right at the end of your career when you can't quite do it anymore, isn't it? Very. Yeah. Was it hard, though, making that, the final decision to actually end it? Yeah, yeah, because as I say, I, I'd love to, to have a few games in the future to, to play in. Uh, I am going to miss it. Um, it's not as if I'm, I'm, I'm out on my knees and I can't move anymore. I could still play at a certain level, but you know the level that I like playing at is the top. and I, I like to find consistency and I don't like to let people down. So before that starts happening more regularly, I think it's time to call it a day. Stephen, you've never let anyone down. <laughs> uh, I wish you well in the future. And uh, again, much. what a brilliant career you've had. Thanks a lot. I appreciate it. Thank you.